Hi folks, David Creative Craft House. To show you a, a game set, uh, there are two um, kind of fun and, and certainly educational uh, for the right ages math games here. Uh, just fun for adults and, and also um, is going to develop some math skills for the kids. And what, we've, what I've done here is I've created kind of this um, board and cover set with one game inside and one game on the cover. And everything, these are the playing pieces for this game, but everything will go inside the set and you know, get its nice enclosed playing surface. So I'm going to take the games uh, one at a time here. Um, and we'll start with the 45 game. A little bit, that may help. Uh, the 45 game, this dice, I made a little insert here for the, for the dice. Use one dice, and you can play two to four players. So it's going to come with these four nice uh, cribbage style pegs. And I'll just pick a couple pegs here. Um, and uh, let's get let's see a bit more contrast there. Uh, right, that's good. Um, and uh, the, the object is to get to the finish in 45. And this is an, an addition game. So uh, you've got this uh, uh, hexagon grid here with these holes. This is a nice wood maple base here. Um, so w one person would go first and, and roll the dice. And if you roll a four, that person would find the four in the starting position and put their peg in, put their peg in there. Next person rolls and, and rolls a two. Now, from this point on, uh, you'll notice that uh, any peg is surrounded by three other adjacent positions. In this case, the four is surrounded by seven, eight, nine, and the two, well, is only surrounded by two, uh, six and eight. On the next roll, in order to move, the brown peg here must roll something that takes his starting position, which is a four, and when added to the roll of the dice, ends up on a, a, either a seven, eight, or a nine. So if the brown peg rolls a six, for instance, well, six plus four is ten, and he's no ten around his position, so he's, he forfeits his turn. The red player moves, and, and oh man, also rolls a six, and. 6 plus 2 is 8, so he can't move. But if the brown position rolls, say, a, 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 three, a 3, um, then 4 plus 3 is 7, and he can advance, and so forth. So on the 7 position, you notice it's surrounded by 8, 9, or 11. Well, you must roll the dice, and uh, oh, I've never seen so many 6s. And if I roll the 2, then I could move to the 9, and so forth. Trying to be the first one, to get to 45, when you get up to the last row, let's say I'm on 41 here, I would have to roll a 4 in order to get up, to, to, move, to finish the game, to get to 45, all right? If I was on here, 42, I'd have to roll a 3. Now, a couple rules. If, if, you're, if your only move is to land on an opponent, you cannot move, you forfeit your turn. As an alternative, uh, rule if you wanted to play it. You could play that if you can land on an opponent, you send them back to the starting slot here. All right. That works better when there's four players rather than there's two. And of course you can play with the, you know, four, four players. They come with the four pegs and uh, it's kind of fun. Uh, in terms of the math skills, this would be for the younger set. It's, you know, it's addition, but we are, you know, we are adding in their mind big numbers, 28 plus 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Um, so there's a little bit to think about, but, but great fun for me. Now the next one I will show you is called the factors game, or the multiples game. And you can use, uh, in your mind, you've got to use uh, addition or subtraction. Let me pull this in just a little bit closer here so you can see it better. All right, uh, and uh, this one uh, we're, we're going to use um, these color pieces. I didn't use pegs because I didn't want to drill holes in the cover. Um, and we use one dice. And again, it's two to four players. Uh, I'll start out with a couple playing pieces here. And uh, the, the idea is you must, whatever the roll of the dice is, you must start on something that is a multiple, is a factor um, in the roll of the dice, whereas four is a factor into where I want to move. Or four goes into the number that I want to move to in, in, in a, evenly, in a whole number. So in this case, if I look at the starting board, uh, I rolled a four. Well, what are the factors of four? Well, I actually have three choices, don't I? 
4 will not go into 45, it will not go into 18, but it will go into 36, 4 times 9 is 36. It will go into 40, 4 times 10, and 4 times 1 is 4. So if that's my starting, I could pick any position to start from. I think it would be wise to start from the center. And the same thing with this blue man here rolls a 6. He must find a factor of 6. Uh, he cannot roll, he cannot, if I'm already on his face, the standard rules would be he cannot move there, so he would roll 18, because 3 times 6 is 18, and that would be the only legal move. Now, on the next roll of the dice, you'll notice that the green guy here is surrounded by 10, 6, and 48. It, it doesn't matter what he's sitting on at this point. He just wants to find a number, roll a number that is a factor of one of these three, so that he can move. If you roll something that is not a factor, like 5 would not be a factor, you can't move, forfeits a turn. If I roll a 1, well, that's almost like a free roll, because a 1 is a factor in any number. So, uh, you know, I'm just going to move forward here. Now the blue would move, rolls a 5, but he's, he's surrounded by 10, 12, and 36. Well, 10 is a, uh, 5 is a factor of 10, 10 and so he can move there. Now we're going to proceed in that manner, you know, the the... The green player now has to roll a number that is a factor of 32, 21, or 20, and if he does, so and proceed up to the game. When you get to the ending position, any one of these ending positions, to finish the game, to win the game, you must roll a six. If you roll a six first, then, then you are the winner. So a little more advanced thinking. Uh, that's kind of what I like about this game. It's got something for, if you've got a, a range of children, you know, maybe the uh, five, six, seven-year-old on the addition, the uh, 9, 10, 11 year old and the multiplication, division factors uh, part of this game. Um, and it's great fun for even adults just, just to play. I mean, it, it's kind of exciting. Again, the, an alternate rule you could do here, and it works better when you're playing uh, three or four players, is that if you can land on an opponent, you send them back to start. And that's just an optional alternate rule as opposed to if you land, you cannot move to where an opponent already lies. All right? These are based on uh, wonderful uh, games from Teresa Evans, Australian website, making math more fun. She has so many uh, ideas. She sells uh, books and offers many things you can print out for free. And uh, this is done with her permission, and I thank, I thank her very much. Um, all, this is all made in our Hudson, Florida shop and available at uh, creativecrafthouse.com. Oh, and by the way, this board measures here about 7.5 inches square.